Hey everybody, what's going on? Brother John here, and uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, I was watching a video about um, prosperity preachers. Another video put out by The Edge 026, and uh, I'll put a link below. But it had me thinking about a lot of different things. Um, and uh, <laughs> I just find it amazingly ironic that most Christians, you know, they'll go about saying, what would Jesus do? Be like Jesus. Follow in the footsteps of Jesus. You know? And all this stuff. And yet, and I cannot speak for all Christians in the world. Of course not. <laughs> but I will just go by my um, personal experience of uh, 30 years being in a variety of different Christian churches and meeting a variety of different people. Okay? from all different walks of life and um, <laughs> if we're really going to be let's say purist here and uh, wanting to be like Jesus um, I don't think I've met one really to tell you the truth that is like Jesus you know when it comes to like these um, let's say worldly possessions that so many will preach saying you shouldn't follow these things and all this other stuff and yet you have many Christians who will watch these prosperity preachers in their nice suits driving their nice car living in their million dollar homes okay um, do you really think not really if Jesus was living today if this person even existed um, the person that is portrayed in the Bible do you really think this person, Jesus, would be living like any of these people? And, and, and another thing. You know, uh, there's a story of, which is uh, in three of the four Gospels. Uh, and Jesus and the rich ruler. And he asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? You know? It's funny, though, in that, in that story that... Um, the ruler calls Jesus good and Jesus says why do you call me good nobody is good but God okay <laughs> therefore uh, implying that he is not good only God is good but I digress and so uh, Jesus tells him well you've, you've heard of the commandments you know do not commit adultery do not steal do not murder and the ritual says well I followed all these since I was young and then Jesus says well you must do one other thing sell everything you have and give to the poor obviously Jesus was addressing um, so the interpretation goes uh, that Jesus knew the heart of this man and that he relied on his worldly goods for his security I don't think it was so much of a greed thing, uh, perhaps, but the thing is that he was relying on his possessions and what he has uh, for his uh, personal security. So my question is, um, how many Christians do you know rely on their personal possessions for their security? How many Christians Right? Seeking to make more money, to have more things. Right? How many have things that they don't need? If you're a Christian out there, ask yourself how many things are you in your house that you collect that you don't need? Things you want to buy. Funny in this video that uh, one uh, Christian, uh, Bezel333, who I was subscribed to when I was a Christian, Funny how he quotes Jesus and saying do not chase after things that will uh, have rust, will rust and stuff like that, will moth will destroy. And he's um, sitting in front of a flat screen TV and a, and a fax machine and got these nice pictures on the wall and no doubt probably lives in a nice house. 
How many Christians are actually living as Jesus did? Hmm? Relying totally on God for their sufficiency. Funny also how none of the apostles that we know of were married. It doesn't talk about anything about family, right? Paul actually uh, mentions that it's better to be single. But how many Christians and you see Christian websites and dating sites and all this other stuff, right? Chasing and and hunger after having a mate. Yet Paul says it's better to be single and devote yourself to God, right? It just amazes me though. If you really want to be like Jesus, how many would give up their worldly possessions? How many would be living to live in humble means? Say, a single person in a one-room hut or apartment or whatever and just preaching the gospel. Because isn't that what your life is supposed to be devoted to? Preaching the gospel? Right? So people will be saved? Now you could tell me, oh, we have all this technology now. It, it's better to advance the gospel we can reach more people well you know not for nothing in our modern age with all the technology we have with all the the assumed Christians we have there that are preaching the gospel nothing has really changed that much in the world there is no shift going on there is no hearts and minds being changed everything is pretty much the same if not getting worse so perhaps maybe if Christians did live as they preached they, they you know the words of Jesus well, I don't know maybe things will change I don't know I highly doubt it because there's so many like us who are skeptics who um, don't believe the Bible being full of contradictions, written by men, but my point is, it's just the irony, the hypocrisy that goes on. Now, I didn't like, I didn't like prosperity pe preachers when I was a Christian at all. I mean, I saw right through their crap, you know, and, um, <coughs> excuse me, but it just amazes me how thousands upon thousands will follow these preachers and use the Gospels and use the Jesus um, to justify um, being uh, wealthy. When Jesus lived a life, uh, supposedly, of very humble means. Very humble means. He actually told some of his apostles, you know, just take your cloak and your sword, right, and go about. Right? He he said to to leave your father, mother, that if you don't hate your brother and sister, you know, if if he is not above all priorities, then you're you're really not devoted to him. So how many are willing to um give up the life of chasing after uh, having more give up the life of the American dream right the house with the white picket fence and the two two and a half kids and a dog kind of life I wonder would Jesus be living like this I highly doubt it so, even those who, in America, and yeah, a lot of the Christians, are, they're struggling, but they still have more than most of the world, and yet they're still complaining, still wanting, still trying to fill whatever void they have in their life. And they go about preaching Jesus. 
What would Jesus do? He certainly wouldn't be doing most of the things if this person existed and actually said the things he did. He certainly wouldn't be living probably like 95% of Christians now, especially those in America. So, you can uh, just keep your book, keep your hypocrisy, and think you're fooling most of the world. But a lot of us, you're not fooling. Not at all. Namaste.